today on Lake Commandos. The things we'll do for fish. Steve takes on an unpressured wilderness lake. You've never seen bass this thick. And a veteran big bass expert. Yeah, oh, there, there he is. I knew today was going to be a battle. No, no! In what becomes a toe-to-toe, largemouth heavyweight prize fight. Oh, God. <laughs> I love fishing new water. The challenge is always the same. Find fish, trigger strikes. Ooh, that's a big fish. But what I really love is beating the other guy. I got a fish. This is Lake Commandos. It may be hard to believe, but there are still hundreds of lakes around the country that are relatively untouched by anglers and yet are loaded with hungry fish. Part of being a true lake commando is seeking out as many of those lakes as possible. So today, Steve Panaz is headed for the Red Lake Nation in northern Minnesota to meet Native American guide Darwin Sumner and discover the unpressured waters of the reservation. Here in Red Lake, uh, we have um, 32 lakes that we fish within the reservation that non-members can, can fish. Um, we got nine different species, uh, lake trout, rainbows, brookies, walleyes, bass, crappies, bluegills, northern pike. For non-tribal members, getting access to reservation waters and the big bass that live there requires a couple of things. First, they need to be accompanied by a Native American guide like Darwin. And secondly, they need a reservation fishing permit. The only obstacle after that is getting your boat in the water. So this is the ramp? This is the ramp. A little tight, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he had a bass boat. And turns out he has a 21-foot walleye boat. Pretty good for a city guy. You're doing good. Looking good. Can you see the bank a little bit on the I, passenger I can't side? see anything, Howard. Passenger or driver side? Passenger. Okay, that's good. Now straight back. Okay. Good job. If the guys can get the ranger in the water, their commando mission will be straightforward. Locate and catch late summer largemouth bass in heavy cover. But they won't have a big playing field to work with. At just 87 acres, today's lake is tiny by most standards. But don't let the size fool you. It has an abundance of cover, including floating bogs and lily pads, and ample forage in the form of panfish and perch. You're all right, come on back. The things we'll do for fish. You're gonna have to come back. We're off. My goodness. Whew, that was touch and go. This lake, is one of the ones that I've wanted to fish uh, for several months now. I'd heard good things about it from Darwin and others. A uh, little tough to get into. And now that I get on the lake, I look around, it's just gorgeous. It's super clear. This is what lakes probably looked like around the turn of the century before we developed all the shorelines and things. So this is an opportunity that uh, I've been looking forward to. And, and uh, I know Darwin's a good fisherman, so we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a good head-to-head -head to battle today. Today we got the jig and the, the trigger Berkeley trigger crop. Now I like the trigger crop because of the, the appendage it's on it. It moves a lot of water, makes a lot of motion in the water. We're gonna be flipping this up on the cut bank and I'm gonna leave the legs attached for the more uh, slim profile and some of the pockets up in there, the points, the logs, any vegetation you see along the cut bank, we wanna be throwing this right next to it. And this will hopefully get me to outfish Steve today. I want the flexibility of a jig style bait, but in this rice and these pads, a lot of times baits like a jig can have trouble getting through. One of the reasons I really like the Havoc uh, Smash Tube is it's a big profile bait in terms of its presence in the water with the big cuts, but it's a very slim profile. I went with a, a six aught wide gap hook. I want a big heavy hook for getting these fish out. I've got this on 50 pound uh, trilene braid. I want the strength. I've got a heavy action, seven foot, six inch flipping stick. Uh, this is an Abu Garcia villain. And I've got the uh, Abu Garcia Revo Premier, a good solid reel for flipping. And this is the rig that's gonna take Darwin down today.
As guest, Darwin chooses to take first control of the boat and target shallow, floating cutbank bogs with his jig and chigger craw combo. Almost instantly, it's obvious, Steve has his hands full today. Hey, got a bite here. You do? Yeah, oh, there, there he is. Oh, he's... Big fish? He took it up and under there. Where is he? He's coming. Ah! Here, let me get a net for you. I got him. <laughs> Uh, you missed it. I when you started it, you starting the day like that. <laughs> nice hole. This is about the average size, Steve. That's the average size. Average size right here. Uh, that's four. That's four plus. Yeah. Jeez. Would you like to uh, re release him for me, buddy? No, no you okay, put him okay. over there. That's your fish. <laughs> he may be a great host, but like a good commando, Darwin isn't going to hold back in this competition. The question is, will Steve have an answer? <laughs> Go on. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends, one at a time. Trilene, Anglers Trust Berkeley Trilene, Abu Garcia, for life. Power Pole, shallow water anchor. Swift, silent, secure. Garmin, the clearest scanning sonar images on the water. And by... Plano, protect your passion. Steve Panaz and Darwin Sumner are on a mission to find and catch big, unpressured largemouth bass on a beautiful, pristine wilderness lake deep in Minnesota's Red Lake Indian Reservation. For Darwin, this is more than an opportunity to test his skills against a fellow lake commando. It's a chance for this longtime veteran guide and tournament angler to show off the incredible fishing and scenery he's known all his life, but until recently was off limits to any non-tribal members like Steve Panaz. It was clear from the start that Darwin fishes bass a lot. He was flipping tight to the cover. He was fishing all the known fish spots. I knew today was going to be a battle. Why do you call this a cut bank? You see how the, the grass is on top of the water that it's actually a floating mat. Oh, it is? Floating bog, yeah. Okay. Now, there's going to be wood and then little points, little points, try to target the points. I've had a chance to fish a lot of different places. This was one of the most unique situations I've had a chance to fish ever. Floating bog, fish underneath, it was pretty cool. Got one? Yep. I'll be dying. What do you got there? Maybe it's a snake. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's a bass. Is it? Yeah. Net. Where's the net guy? Wait, hold up. Oh, it's fine. I'll get it out. Just got to get it out of the grass there. Oh, that's a nice one. Holy crap. <laughs> Darwin, that's a big. That's a nice size that's of a big bass. You know what? I don't know if these fish have spawned. Look at the bells. <laughs> like, I mean, seriously, look at the. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Good job. Man. Hey, tie it up. Fish. We'll, we'll, we'll count it. We'll count it. Oh, why well, am I in the boat? Forty-five minutes into it, are you worried? The tide. I'm not worried a bit. Oh, jeez! Why don't you set the hook? <laughs> Baby. <laughs> 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 Got one. Jeez. Oh, look at this one. Yeah, I can't believe how big these things are. Hey, let me grab net, man. Got them. Oh, yeah, number four. <laughs> Oh, good man. fish, good, good. I have never seen bass this thick. I mean, it's just, the depth for the length is unbelievable. I mean, look at that thing. What a cool pattern. He came out of this little hole right here. What happens is this cut bank, this is floating bog, and there's water underneath it. You can see the lily pads and all this, and he's just laying under. Watch what happens when I let him go. He's just gonna slide right back under there. See, he went right back under here. This is a safe haven right now from predators. And you know, it's, it's uh, a spot where you could almost live shine or uh, uh, let your bait fish swim under and get under these things. But this whole area has got more than one fish under it. The problem is where can we fish it? And so we're flipping jigs to the edges, but when you got holes like this and like this, we're hitting those as well. But this, is, this is one of the most unique patterns I've fished in a lifetime.
If you're running a two-stroke engine like an old 90 here, you know you gotta add oil to your gas or risk damaging or even destroying your engine. The question I always struggle with is how much oil do I add to the fuel? Fortunately, Yamaha makes the conversion easy with its handy ratio right measuring cup. It takes all the guesswork out of mixing oil and fuel. To achieve the 50 to 1 ratio I need, I simply fill to this line for every 2.5 gallons of gas, then repeat the process for the number of gallons added to the tank. In this case, four times for the 10 gallons added. The ratio right. When it comes to achieving peak performance, maintenance matters. This segment is brought to you by Yeti Coolers. Yeti, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. On a hidden gem in the heart of Minnesota's Red Lake Reservation, Steve Panaz is locked in an eye-opening commando battle with longtime guide Darwin Sumner. Flipping the thick, shallow cover has produced some solid fish, but time is nearly up on Darwin's pattern. Oh, there's one right there. Got him. Go on. Finally got him. Here, let me get the net. That's a nice sure. fish. Well, he's not as big as I thought he was, but he's... Oh, some of the average size ones we got. Beauty. Okay, finally. Darwin, I can't believe the size of these fish. You were. I mean, look at that. Yeah. Finally, yeah. On, on the last point, I was going to fish right there, then we're going to head out to your pad. So that's average. <laughs> right on. Three minutes left. <laughs> so what is the score now? We got four to two. Huh? Four to two? I thought we were tied. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't count, so. Oh, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> You know, Darwin picked a great pattern today, flipping uh, craws on a, on a jig. I went with tubes for a couple of reasons. One, I see all these pad fields and I see all this rice fields and all this vegetation. And a lot of times top waters can really be a great way to fish these types of waters because you got to cover a lot of water. The smash tube is a great bait. It's got a really heavy nose. It's a heavy, heavy tube in terms of the thickness of the plastic and you can fish it as a Texas rig, you can fish it as a Carolina rig, but you can also finish, fish it as a topwater. Wow! Come on. <laughs> Did you see he blew up hold on it? Hold him, hold him, hold him, grab the neck here. <laughs> Come on out of there! Is he coming? Yeah, I got him. Did you see that eat on the surface? It, as soon as we set it on the white frog, and I'm going to use it as a frog, boom! Nice fish, Steve. Darwin, what I like about oh, these smash tubes nice. is you can fish these things like a topwater. Use a small little sinker to keep, right, it, keep right. it weighted, yep. and, and you can just drag it over the tops of these pads like this, and they'll eat it. Nice. But if you have one that swirls on it and won't take it, just drop it in the hole and twitch it, and you can get them to right, do it. Right, right, right. Good job. Tubes are a very versatile bait, and one of the things I like about the smash tube is you can get a lot of colors with that bicolor where it's uh, chartreuse on the inside. And, uh, and a dark bait on the other side. So that's the smash tube. And I'm gonna go back to smashing Darwin right now because his <laughs> bait is hot. <laughs> that one hit on the fall. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, look at the size of that guy. Wait, 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 wait. Let's get him oh, better yeah, first, yeah. then Get him up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got him. There you go. That nice. is the <laughs> deepest bass I have ever seen. Look at how, how thick he is. <laughs> thick that fish is. Seriously, that is. I gotta pull my jig. Ooh, look at that. Smash tube. He hit that on the, as it was nice. falling. I felt that took. But look at how wow. deep that is. We finally got a pattern going. We got some fish on those inside floating bogs. We got three or four that way. But we're getting more bites in this zone from about six to eight feet, especially with pads, if we focus on some of these pad beds. These smash tubes are working well. I went to a little bit heavier sinker just to get a fall rate. I'm not fishing it as a top water anymore. That last fish that came up, it hit it on the fall. I flipped it in there and it was falling down to the bottom and I felt just a little tick. And that's one of the advantages of fishing a, a braid like Trilene braid because it's got super sensitivity, but I personally have never seen bass this fat for their length anywhere in the country. These are amazing fish. Hey, there's a bite. Oh, there you go. 
Oh, ho, 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 what a fish! Well, if he stays on. Oh, you will, you're gonna get him. Look at these jumps. Big fish. Ready? Here he comes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, finally got one. Oh, that's a bruiser too. After, look at the same, same features as the other one. Big gut, thick body. Just health, healthy, healthy fish. The commandos have the pattern dialed in, and Steve has the lead. But there's still time for a veteran bass buster like Darwin Sumner. It's my ass. <laughs> Lake Commandos is brought to you by Yamaha Marine. Reliability starts here. Yeti, wildly stronger. Keep ice longer. Frayville, trusted gear since 1938. Berkeley Power Bait, fish bite and won't let go. And by Abu Garcia for life. Our commando matchup on the Red Lake Reservation is coming down to the wire. The Havoc Smash Tube is the hot bait, and right now, Steve Panaz has the hot hand. <laughs> there you go. He, hit, he nice. hit the second that bait hit the water. Nice. I gotta get, get him out of that grass. Get him out of the grass, buddy. Oh, it feels heavy. Look at that. Once they bury in there, they're stuck. What do you mean, Four pounds of bass and five pounds of weeds. There you go. Nice job. <laughs> Okay. Nice. Good job. <laughs> nice fish. I've got a severe case of bass thumb because of fish like this. Oh, man, he's a mule. As soon as they hit, they just buried themselves in the weeds, and it's just like a... Well, it's interesting. I threw into the shallow stuff, and as soon as that tube hit the water, wham, he was on it. <laughs> but it's a good fish, huh? Same size fish. Nice fish. Oh, I'll take it. Let me let this go so we give you a chance to catch up. You bet. The numbers and qualities of bass we have in Red Lake, uh, with all the lakes, uh, the average size is really, they average three to five pounds. I mean, that's, that's on average, you can, you can catch uh, multiple limits in the daytime. No, this is an amazing experience to hit a body of water that's not developed like a lot of lakes around the country now. This is a lake, what lakes probably looked like around the turn of the century. Big fish, big numbers, and just a, it was just a cool experience to be able to see a lake in its pristine state. There you go. There you go. What is it? It's a bass. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Hey. As soon as we moved out a little deeper, we got them. Yeah. Darwin, I wonder if your fish are spawned yet. A lot of these fish are so thick. That's just how fat they get after the post spawn. They just gorge. They just gorge up, huh? Gorge up. If you're looking for an experience that you'll never forget, come up to Red Lake and fish some of these bodies of water with guys like Darwin. They know the lakes, and it's an opportunity to catch big walleye, big bass, big crappie, even trout and lake trout in pristine settings, it's a trip you'd never forget. Nope. Got one? Got yeah, one? that's a good one. Net? Yeah. Whoa, look at the size of this guy. Nice fish. Yeah, that's a good one. What a way to end the day. There we go, there we go. Get him. Oh, there we go. All right, good job. Darwin, I have had good days of bass fishing before, but I, I have to admit, when you're catching fish nice. like this all day long, that's incredible. Yeah, nice job. That's incredible. Nice fish. All that same size all day. That's incredible. What a fishery and what a day in the water. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming out here. Me focus is always like to go like this. But I think I turned it off. One, two, three, one, two, three. Been a long day for Pete.